are just home from what felt like the longest day ever. Like, um, we landed really early this morning and our room wasn't ready so we had to go walking around and I had no camera to film so we literally just like walked all day. Um, we're just back from dinner and I'm gonna take my makeup off because we've been awake, how many hours have we been awake for mum? Like 22 hours we've been awake for. I'm gonna get into my pajamas and take my makeup off and go sleep because tomorrow we are sighting. So we gotta get a rest. So today we are going sightseeing um, and mom wants to go to Westminster and to Carnaby Street and all the kind of main like city centre locations so we're just gonna put on our comfy clothes and go walking around. Chill day Sunday. hotel room that has any light so I'm coming on to fill you in on what happened today so we went we got up quite late actually today um, and we went into town to do a bit of sightseeing and as you can see by the footage we did like a lot like um, so we went around on the bus now we didn't actually hop off at any stops so we're gonna go in the morning and hop off at one or two stops that we thought looked good yeah more sightseeing tomorrow my hospital appointment is on Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. And like I am really nervous because it's getting closer. I was only saying to my mom earlier on, like usually when I'm on like a city break, I can totally relax. But like this time around, like I'm just finding it really difficult to actually just relax because I know that like that's waiting at the end. But like we fly home on Wednesday, but on Tuesday I have to like find out what their treatment plan is here. So it's just like a bit like daunting. It's like, what are they gonna say? What are they gonna do? Because like, Hopefully they say like surgery or something like that because it's really close like London's obviously close to Ireland and it would be really ideal if I could get treatment here instead of Italy but it's just like it's scary do you know. Day two complete I am checking out now I'm going to bed. Today we are going to do we got yesterday the hop on hop off tickets for like that like tour around London um, and today we're going to hop back on the bus because it's like a 24 hour ticket we're gonna hop back on the bus and we're gonna go and do a cruise of the Thames so we're very excited because we really it's something that mom really wants to do isn't it mum yep and see the Tower of London as well oh and we're going to see the Tower of London as well 
that's what we're doing, um, where they used to get beheaded and where the crown jewels are. It's just positive, isn't it? Like yeah. positive vibes all right? Tower London on a fucking boat. There it is there in the background. And it is beautiful, but it closes at five. And because I slept all day, um, I missed it really, that's the truth. Um, but we went into this shop, like where the, it's like a souvenir shop, and the guy who worked there like took us through like this little like tour pamphlet thing and he like told us everything that was in it and he was really helpful actually. Mum just said there like she was like we actually probably got more out of him than we would have been the... I really knew his stuff didn't I? He knew everything. Yeah he was such a... She was so enthusiastic about his job. Lovely man. He was a lovely man. Awesome. And then we said we'd buy the book and we didn't and we left because we're horrible people. And I'm gonna I'm feel, so I'm gonna feel really bad about that. But there was just such a big queue like and I'm starving. I know I feel really bad. No, it was only five pound. Like it's where he was getting us to buy something really, like, you know what I mean. Oh well. Anyway, there's the tower, but we will not be going in. So much like we went to the Thames cruise and we went to the um, Tower of London which we missed but we still had fun at and we went to Waterloo for some um, dinner and it was just like a, it was just a really really nice day like we got back to the room about seven to be honest like I know we only left at about three but we got back to the room at eight, seven um, and it was just a nice amount of time out like Tomorrow is the day of oh, is the day of the appointment, which is why we're here. Um, so obviously, as we've gathered, we've come here to seek a second opinion because I've been diagnosed with. Well, Ireland have called me terminal, but there aren't any specialists in my cancer in Ireland, so I don't really think that they have a right to say that. Um, and I don't believe I'm terminal. I just like I'm not letting that happen. So I, I've taken to other things to find help with like um just to find help I just need help so um tomorrow we're meeting with a doctor called Dr Beatrice Seddon she actually specializes in soft tissue cancers which is the type of cancer that I have um and I'm excited to meet her because I was reading her biography online and she's really enthusiastic about trial drugs and stuff but I'm also really scared like I'm pretty terrified about what she's going to say. Um, but I need to get some rest. I'm going to watch TV and rub my feet and do a face mask and just chill. I'm up early tomorrow. I can't afford to lie in bed on my phone and wake up late. I have to get up early. Have to, have to, um, to be there at half twelve. And you guys have been so amazing sending me loads of really kind and inspiring messages keep me like motivated and like try and get me through it and it's just so nice like I don't think I know I can't reply to all of them because it's a bit mad sometimes but it's just like it's amazing to read through and see 
that people do care. Do you know what I mean? And people are thinking of me and people do want me to get well and are behind me. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm scared. Okay, so it's the morning of my appointment and we are here outside the, um, it's called the London Oncology Care building. We're in this place called Marleybone, which I was calling Mary Le Bone, which isn't what it's called at all. Um, and it's quite like, hang on, I'll show you guys. Have you ever seen Oliver? You know, like all the real proper places, like where all the posh people in London live? That is like what this is like. Um, and I think Harley Street is like where all the kind of lead oncologists work from. Well, it's where all the top people work from. Top doctors, top everybody. We made it, mom. So I'm literally just coming on for like 10 minutes to fill everybody in on um, what happened at my appointment today. So we went to, ma'am, you're in the background. I'm not do you need a cup of tea, ma'am? Yeah. I think we both do. Yeah, please. Um, we went to Harley Street today um, to meet Dr. Beatrice Seddon, which I've said all along on this uh, vlog. And we were really hopeful because it's the first actual sarcoma specialist that we've met properly like and, and consulted with. Um, and we were really hoping that she'd come up with some kind of miracle or that, you know, in Ireland they'd be looking at it as terminal and that she'd look at me and go, oh, that's not that bad. You know, we just had all these ideas. Like we thought that it, we just were hoping for the best really. Um, now I'm not gonna sit here and say that it was a waste of time because it wasn't like, it really, really wasn't a waste of time. Um, but like she didn't, <sighs> Like she had chemotherapy recommendations, but the underlying point didn't change. Um, so she still reckons that I have like 18 months to two years and she still reckons that I should do chemotherapy and that without chemotherapy, I will like die quickly and horribly. Um, so essentially like I didn't like, we learned about different types of chemotherapy and different types of chemotherapy options, but we didn't necessarily get any sense of hoping that, you know, it's gonna be cured or I'm gonna live for a certain length longer than anybody else that has it. And I found out, obviously I went on Instagram because everybody was really kind of anxious to find out like what happened. Uh, so I went straight on and I was sobbing on my story like and I put a post and that up, but um, I kind of like I've been crying kind of since well I've been crying since this morning well since kind of yeah this morning before I even went and I've just like exhausted crying like I've got a headache and I just want food and a drink and I just want to relax I'm kind of over it now you know um we can't like change like what she said and nothing has actually changed really other than that we've heard another person speak so it's not necessarily like a huge kind of thing um there are issues like with like money and care and stuff as well. Uh, if I was to get the chemotherapy here, um, which I'm entitled to because I'm a British citizen, I'd have to move here, um, which sounds good because if you're gonna come and get chemo here, that's grand. And you would think I'd just come and get the chemo and then I can go home. But uh, nah, she said that like, if I came and got the chemo here for this particular drug that is available here, um, I'd need to stay and get maintenance then after that and you know, essentially it's not gonna save me it's probably just gonna give me time and I'd be on my own and in London so is there much time is there much point in prolonging my life if I'm gonna be on my own and in a different country like not really if you ask me so 